Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. It is Monday, the 6th day of June 2022, and it's time for the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion, and we have a lot to talk about. A very serious forecast has come out from the ECMWF seasonal guidance for the hurricane season, and it is alarming. And I don't use that word often. You think about Ida, you think about Katrina, Michael in 2018, and other examples, of course, where we really do have to sound the alarms that something dangerous is coming. Those are for singular events, those particular situations where we do have to hype everything up, scream as loud as you can, get out of the way, do whatever it is you can to save your life. In this situation, it's for the season as a whole that it's very alarming. And we're going to get into it, all right? We'll get there. This is important. So sit back, take it all in. We got to talk. One of those things, close the door, take a seat. We need to chat. All right. First, at least some good news. Alex moving away from Bermuda. It did bring some tropical storm conditions to the area earlier today. See a few squalls, things like that. Nothing that you all can't handle. I mean, Bermuda's tough. They really are. Uh, and nothing else brewing out there over the next several days. Here it is on our interactive tracking map, and we can zoom in. There's Bermuda. Bermuda is not one island, by the way. It's made up of several islands. Kind of looks like a fish hook out here, oriented southwest to northeast. We have a camera there at Howard's Place. Hopefully this will load up nice and fast for me. It did. Thank you. And this is what it looks like right now. Low clouds moving by as Alex pulls away. So things will start to improve even more. There is, however, the threat of rip currents over here along the coast of uh, parts of the mid-Atlantic down to the southeast here as the energy from Alex does still propagate out into the ocean. And what it did earlier, too, that energy is still moving towards the coast. So be careful. If you're headed to the beach, watch for, you know, just go to weather.gov, weather.gov. Put in the zip code of the beach area that you are going to and look for the red headlines, beach hazard statement or hazardous weather outlook, anything like that. If it's red, it's attention getting for a reason, so be sure to check that out, all right? Got to keep you safe down there. Looking at the satellite animation for this afternoon, not a lot else going on out there. Pretty good Saharan air outbreak, and you're going to get those even in a very busy season. Uh, upper level low over here, it looks like. Some strong southwesterly winds out here. Uh, it's June. It's not until later, uh, probably mid-July on this year, that things are going to start to really pick up. Alex notwithstanding. Speaking of Alex, it looks more like an extra tropical system as some mid-latitude energy is involved with it overall. And again, it will pull away from Bermuda. There's just, there's, there's those low clouds right there. Even on the infrared, you can see that as I showed you on the webcam, the live cam from Howard's Place. Also, it does look a little bit elongated here on the vorticity signature. See that? That elongated look, that's a sign that it's not quite purely textbook tropical, and that's what we'd expect again in June. It's later in the season that we're going to have the real trouble coming, and you'll see that. It's going to come off Africa. These tropical waves are going to be out here, and they're going to have that nice rounded look, and I think we're going to have a lot of them and a lot to keep up with as things go forward. All right, sea surface temperature anomalies for today. The Pacific still in this La Nina pattern, although it has moderated some. Water temperatures have come up a little bit, uh, relative to the background state. Um, so we're not in this strong La Nina. It's more of a weak La Nina right now, and you couple that with the warm Atlantic, and that is the makings for a very, very busy hurricane season. The models, these seasonal models, have taken all of this in through the month of April, the month of May, and it said, all right, we got all this data. Here's what we think. And the results are eye-opening to be sure, and we'll get to that. So anomalies, definitely favorable for a very busy hurricane season. What about the actual sea surface temperatures? Well, Gulf of Mexico up here, the northern part, as usual, very warm. These are not anomalies, by the way. These are actual temperatures. And you know, we're talking 82 to near 85, depending on where you are. The shallower, warmer water is getting close to 29 to 30 Celsius, or the mid-80s Fahrenheit. There's the loop current in the uh, Gulf, and pretty warm against the shelf waters of Florida, warming up around Texas as well. Still have many, many weeks to go uh, where the water temperatures will continue to warm, and without tropical activity and without cold fronts coming down, 
the Gulf will be right where it needs to be to produce some very intense hurricanes. That's almost always the case. Usually, nothing alarming about that in terms of, I mean, it's always going to be warm enough. So any articles that you've seen about, oh, it's, you know, different or stronger than normal. I mean, come on, it's always going to be warm enough pretty much any time, uh, any hurricane season. Meanwhile, off the Atlantic seaboard, getting there, Pamlico Sound specifically, nice and warm in the low 80s. But the offshore waters still have a little bit of work to do from the southern outer banks down to Myrtle Beach. But Charleston and Folly and down to Savannah, Jacksonville, those areas, yeah, water temperatures close to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. For those of you from Cape Cod down to the Delmarva, you got to wear the wetsuit. Or maybe not if you just want to have cold skin after coming out of the water. I've said it before. i got to have the water temperatures in the mid-80s where I'm comfortable. That's just me. Anyhow, let's get to this. Very, very important. Uh, I mean, come on. When you get people like Ben Knoll saying these very bold statements, and this is rooted in science. i got to make that very clear. It's a shame that I have to do that. We just live in that era, you know, where you almost have to justify things. There's no agenda, you know. It's just science. We're looking at these models, the guidance, and I say, as I've said before, it's a favorable, good thing. We have the warning early, and we can try to do something about it. What is that warning? Well, Ben Knoll talking about the latest ECMWF seasonal guidance, and it's not good. As he says, the June 2022 run that just came out was the most active June prediction since the model has been doing this going back to 1993, especially, and this is so important in terms of accumulated cyclone energy, and we're going to get to what that means and what it is for this year in just a minute. Next tweet from uh, Phil Klotzbach, 11 hurricanes it's forecasting, 19 named storms, the Euro seasonal output here, way above the long-term average overall. I mean, it is just, we really have to pay attention. We do. This is one of those seasons it could end up being historic because you think about 2020, and, and the model has been tweaked, but in 2020, the June forecast, let me look, I had a a text message from uh, my friend Dylan, Dylan Federico. He works for Wink down there in South Florida, Wink TV. And he was saying um, 2020 it was forecasting, um, let's see, 19 name storms. I'm sorry, 2020 was 11 name storms and six hurricanes. And we had 30 name storms and I can't remember, like nine or 10 hurricanes, whatever it was. So the Euro really under forecast in 2020. Last year it did better, it was producing in the model guidance 17 name storms and 10 hurricanes, so it did better. June 2022, 19 name storms, 11 hurricanes, and as Eric Webb points out, an ACE, the accumulated cyclone energy. This is where it really counts scientifically. This tells us nothing about impacts, where they're going to go, who they're going to impact. But that ACE score of 225, let me put it into terms you can understand. Let's just pretend that a particular team in the NBA normally scores 104 points a game. I'm just making that up. That's around what the normal seasonal ace would be, depending on what database you look at for the Atlantic. Accumulated cyclone energy. How much wind output is happening? Around 104. 100 to 104. Let's say 104. So... Your team that you follow in the NBA normally scores 104, an average of 104 points a game, 104. But the analysts for tonight's game are saying that that team is forecast to score 225 points. People would just lose their minds in the sports world. ESPN, everybody. It would just be front page. The trending on Twitter would just blow up. Team whatever, the the forecast is for 225 points in tonight's game versus so-and-so. For whatever reason, that would be number one making like headline sports news. In weather news, this should be very similar. I'm serious. An ace of 225, as Eric points out, that's like 2017, especially when the density maps show where, and this is just a small sample, if you look at it at face value, the density, the enhanced expected value, Look at where this is, headed up towards where most of the people are. Northeast Caribbean, Southeast Gulf of Mexico, Florida Peninsula, and the Mid-Atlantic. That's those reds. 
The usual expected value is that lighter red color, and then there is no reduced expected value until you get to the Eastern Pacific, another hallmark of a very, very busy Atlantic hurricane season. So, you know, we're not messing around here. I don't mess around, yeah, sometimes I do, just to keep things on the light side. You can't be serious all the time, but in cases like this, we do need to be 100% serious with everything that's going on. We have to be ready. There is, you know, geopolitical, we have the gas price situation, still trying to deal with the, the fallout from COVID, and we can't ignore those things and pretend like they don't exist. And you cannot hope your way out of this situation. Prayer and hope are good. That's fine, whatever works for you. But those are not planning tools. Those are not strategies. Oh, I hope it doesn't come to, I hope they're wrong. I hope they're full of you know what. That's, that's not a strategy. That might make you feel good in the temporary moment, but strategies are things like making sure your insurance is up to date, that you have insurance at all, seeing if your home can have anything done to it that you can afford to make things easier, make sure your medications are up to date. And I think with the gas crisis, and it is a crisis because it's almost unaffordable for a lot of people, get some extra gas cans now and maybe go ahead and get an extra 10 gallons in the next few weeks store it away somewhere safely maybe put some additive in there go on google look it up how do i store gas for three or four months safely you need to do that i'm going to do that i want to make sure we're ready as a team as a family you got a generator get that thing serviced if you've used it recently if you've bought one and you've never used it read the owner's manual use youtube learn from people let's turn this around and say let's take the positives of what we know about the science and preparedness and don't just sit back and throw your hands up and give up if you do that you know then it's all over there's nothing we can do we have to adapt and use our collective knowledge and the science that we've got to help us be ready because this is very serious it really is all right this is a big part of it look at that that warm horseshoe of anomalously warm water around the area of colder water in the North Atlantic there the tropics down here above average, the La Nina over here not overwhelming, almost a classic look. Not quite 0405, close though. And we still have time for this to warm up even more, especially this part up here, the Northeast Atlantic. I guarantee you Dr. Klotzbach is seeing that, his colleagues and, and he, and they're like, wow. I mean, these anomalies in the Northeast Atlantic, that just screams a very, very busy hurricane season. How do we know that? Because we can go back and say, what other busy seasons did we have? And what did those sea surface temperature profiles look like? It's not random and it's not a mystery. It doesn't line up perfect like that or whatever. You get the idea, but it's very helpful. And this is a signature that we look for and it matches pretty darn close. Also, there's this, the La Nina has modified or moderated a little bit. Uh, expected to dip back down in the mean just a little bit, but look where it is. That is La Nina threshold about right there. So it's right on the money. Not particularly strong. It doesn't take it down like that, you know, where it's overwhelming the signal. That again is a clue that the season should be very active. It's not an overwhelming La Nina. We're not an El Nino, that's for sure. And you match that up with this and it sets the stage for a very, very busy season. All right, so listen, the maps, the maps, the maps. I've had several emails about them. I guess people are taking notice uh, and they want to get one. I've got about 22 of them left. We get a bunch of them that we send out to our patrons as part of the $25 level on Patreon each year. And then I have a, because I have to print like a couple hundred of them. You know, that's just, it, it's the economies of scale there. I don't just print enough for Patreon. There's always some extras and I sell them for $20 flat rate. They come folded in a nice envelope and I send them to you and you use a Sharpie or whatever, or and I'll come back to this page, you can do this like one of our friends down in Orlando. Look at that, those are little pins. That's Alex, he's already plotted Alex. This is our good friend, Mr. Cornelius. That's a pretty good idea, I wanted to show you this. He's got him color coded, already ready to go. He's got it all the way plotted out to Owen as we get forward in time there. All the names for 2022 printed on there. And this is what it looks like, his little box of pens. That's one way to do it. You could also use a Sharpie or whatever. Sharpies work really well. 
Uh, but when he's done with the season, imagine what that's going to look like. You could have something historic and take a picture of it and sell it as an NFT. Do they still do NFTs or did that crash with everything else? Ha ha. Um, anyway, you want to get one of these. It's literally a work of art. I drew this map myself a long time ago. It was my very first project when I started my business. I did it in Adobe Illustrator. And it's come a long way. I've printed millions of them over the years for big box companies, TV stations, radio stations. And now we do it for the public and for our patrons on uh, Patreon. And um, they are 18 by 24, full color. And uh, only 20 bucks. Go to hurricanetrack.com slash store.html. I'll put the link in the description of today's video. I got 22 of them left. And then that's it. I'm not printing any more. Uh, I got to ship them out and get them to you guys. We already got one storm down. You got to get yours before we get Bonnie. That's the challenge here. All right. All right. Um, buckle up. Be ready. You know, don't let this worry you too much. I know that's easy for me to say, but listen, I'm with you. I live in Wilmington. I'm a few miles from the ocean. I'm not right at the ocean front, but my house can get destroyed by wind and tornadoes and flooding rain. The only thing I don't have to worry about where I am is storm surge. I take this just as seriously as you should, you know. Uh, I don't live in Wichita, Kansas, to where I don't have any skin in the game. I love Wichita, by the way. I'm just saying that's like the center of the country almost. I think it's Pratt that's technically the center, uh, but I digress. I'm on your side. I'm trying to help you. I want to keep you safe. I want to keep you informed. And then when these hurricanes do threaten land, we're going to bring you our field coverage like nobody else can. You, guys, you already know that if you've been following for any time, and we're going to be even more capable this year than ever before. We'll talk about that more later and what the game plan is, some of our equipment as we uh, get ready for the season ahead. All right, so do your part. You know, think about it. You know, form a plan, get those gas cans, the generator stuff, the insurance. Don't let it just settle back into the back of your mind and then you wait until there's a hurricane watch and go, oh my God, what am I going to do? We don't want that. We want to keep your blood pressure down and your preparedness up. All right, that is it for me for today. I am going to be out of town for a couple of days doing some fun stuff with the family. But each morning, I'm still going to do the short update. And uh, I think we can skip the afternoon update for the next couple of days because the tropics are kind of quiet. But look forward to the morning update called What's Up in the Tropics. I'll still do those. I've got six of them in the bag. I plan on going the full 183 days of the entire hurricane season. I'm going to try and at least get that morning update done um, each day of the hurricane season. So we'll do that tomorrow, and I'll be back in the office on Thursday. All right? All right, have a good rest of your Monday. I'm Mark Sadoff. As always, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. I'll talk to you again tomorrow morning on What's Up in the Tropics.